Welcome to another crochet tutorial with Cozy Rosie UK. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can crochet your very own granny wristlet bag. This granny bag is made with four different granny squares and I'm going to link in the description box below how to crochet your very own granny square and in the tutorial today we're going to learn how to join them, how to add our zip and of course the lining to our bag. So before we get started, don't forget to hit that notification bell and of course sign up and subscribe so you never miss out on another one of my crochet tutorials again. Let's gather those materials that we need to get started. So the materials we're going to need to make our granny square bag is we're going to need four granny squares. Um, I've made mine five rounds big. Um, you can make them a little bit smaller if you want to and obviously your bag will then be smaller whatever size you've made them. Just make sure they're all the same number of rounds. So I've got one, two, three, four, five rounds in my granny squares. They're all the same. You can do different ones, but I've gone from a very uniform look and I've just used three different colors. So I've used white, pink and a lilac-y kind of color. And then I'm going to use the lilac to join all of these squares. And we'll do that together in a moment. The other materials you'll need is some fabric. So I've just got a, what they're called, a fat quarter and picked a random colour out of that. I've got a corresponding um, cotton thread, I think it's cotton, it's probably in polyester now I've said that. Polyester thread because that's nice and strong um, to go with my fabric and then I've got a zip. Now I think my zip is going to be too long and it really is but that's fine. Oh no we could be okay. Um, so you're going to need a 12 inch zip um, again, that's optional, but it makes life a lot easier for keeping things safe, especially when we're going to be wearing this on our wrist. So for your wrist, I have a 10 centimetre macrame ring because it's nice and big. It's going to allow the bag just to hang. Um, you can, of course, make any kind of strap, but I really like a metal hoop to go around my wrist to hold these little types of bags. So gather all of those materials. Your four granny squares made of five rounds each, um, some fabric, a zip, a needle and thread, nice and strong. Now, because I'm really lazy, I'm going to use pinking shears to prevent my fabric from fraying. Um, so we're going to cut the fabric in a little bit together once we've joined these granny squares. So let's start by joining those. So to join our granny squares, I'm going to make uh, do some double crochet or single crochet in the US joins. So it's just going to, we're going to join them so that they look like that. So we're going to go up the middle and then across. We're then going to go all the way around and that will help for our bag to simply fold in half. And that's where our opening is going to be. So to start, get two granny squares. I'm going to start with those because these all match it doesn't matter um, where I start or where I finish but like I've changed my colours I'm going to start just in just by really lazily tying on my colour because I think it gives a neater finish than starting with a slip knot plus it helps to weave in the ends so I'm literally just tying that on to the corner making sure I go over that finish of the last colour and what we're going to do is we're going to work our join up the middle so this is going to be the two middles all the way up the middle there um, and then we're going to join the other end of the bag by working these two together all the way up. So once your yarn is attached to your first granny square Grab my working yarn, get my other granny square. I am going to go for the same corner with an end. And we're going to simply start by bringing our, inserting our hook through the two chain spaces to slip knot, you know, to kind of slip stitch these together. So I'm going to put my hook through the first one, just making those ends out of the way, and then find a corresponding corner and just literally yarning over and bringing my hook through and then I'm going to chain one which is the start of our turning chain. 
So with joining these granny squares, tuck those ends out of the way, we're going to only work through one loop of our stitch. So we're going to work through the back loop of the granny square that's facing us. And then on this side, move that tail end out of the way, we're going to find the corresponding stitch because we're working this way along. We're going to find the corresponding stitch on the other square. So we've come from the corner. We're going to work into that stitch there. I'm just going to go through on the corresponding stitch into the front loop of this stitch. So there's the stitch. And there's the top. So we're just going to slip that through there. Obviously, we want to keep our working yarn out of the way. Try that again. There we go. So we'll end up with two loops of our granny square. And we've got our chain one there. So we're just going to yarn over, bring a loop up as you would for a normal double crochet and yarn over and pull through both loops. And what this will do is on each square it will leave one loop of the stitch unworked and one worked joining them together and it gives a really good contrasting seam. So we've worked this stitch here, you can see that's the back loop. We're going to insert our hook through the back loop of the next stitch and then through the back loop of the corresponding stitch. So if you're unsure, have a look at the top, or you can count along your stitches because we're working in the middle stitch now, which is this one here. I'm just gonna go through that loop that's closest to us, making sure we catch all the strands. So we've got both loops on our hook, gonna yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through both. I'm just going to repeat that the whole way along. So into our third stitch of this cluster, in through the back loop, and then in through, so this is one that we've slip stitched across. So we just need to make sure that we leave a front loop unworked. This is when your nails come in useful. There we go, separate that stitch a bit. And then we can yarn over and do our double crochet or our single crochet in US terms. And then we've reached our chain space. You can work through just one loop of your chain space to keep the pattern going, which is what I'd recommend. Or if you really want to, you can just go through the chain space. So just insert your hook through that back loop of your first chain. Find your chain space. And insert your hook through the front loop of the chain on this one. Then we just yarn over and pull through both. And we're going to repeat that the whole way along up to that chain space there. So we work through the back loop and the front loop of both squares at the same time. And then pull through. And if I show you what's happening from a seaming point of view, you get that. I really haven't done enough really, but you can see that you're going to get a contrasting seam the whole way up. And I think it looks really pretty. You can, of course, work it in the same colour as your last round in your granny square if you want to, if you don't want it to stand out. But I like it to look quite obvious. I think it makes quite a nice feature in this bag. So once you've reached your chain space, we're going to either work directly through the chain space, so you can go through both the chain spaces to make it quicker, or you can keep the same pattern and just work through that back loop of your chain on, on both uh, squares. Okay, and then we're just going to continue to work across, making sure we catch all these stitches. 
working through the uh, back loop of the first square, the front loop, the corresponding stitch. It's always worth noting, so that's the second stitch for both of those squares. And then we do the third stitch. And then we're back to the chain space again. We're going to repeat this the whole way along um, our granny square until we get to the corner. So keep working across, working through each chain space, making sure that you're matching up your stitches, working through the back loop or the front loop only in each square. And I'll meet you in this first, in that next corner. So I've reached my first corner. I've worked in the last stitch there. And what we're going to do in this corner here is we're just going to go straight through the chain space. We're not going to work through those chains there. We're going to um, work our single crochet or our double crochet if you're UK or US. And then you're going to grab your next two granny squares, bringing them together so that the right sides are facing out. And we're just going to pop our hook through the next two squares. Move them back out of the way, find our working yarn wherever that may have gone. There we go. We're not going to chain, not going to do anything like that. We're simply just going to bring that loop through those corners and straight through to slip stitch those together. And then we're going to chain one. And now they're kind of joined. What we're going to do is without twisting them, without moving them too much, we're going to do exactly the same all the way up to this corner. So we're going to work back through that first corner, yarn over and complete our single crochet <coughs> or our double crochet, depending if you're UK or US. And you can check that join if you'd like. It doesn't create any excess space and it's nice and neat because we're going to come back across this way anyway. And then we're going to work through each of the stitches. So there we go, yep, it's easy to do when I'm off camera. Um, working through the front loop and the back loop of each of these stitches along. I've, worked, I've got the slip stitch area again. I can see what I'm doing. Goodness me. So when you're working through your slip stitches, it's worth noting it's counting across, making sure you've got enough. And I'm just going to use my nail and I'm sure that's not the right thing to do. But at this point, we just need it to go onto our hook. There we go. And then we can complete that single crochet there. And continue working through the front loop and the back loop for each stitch. She says, let's go off camera again, sorry. There we are. <laughs> That's number two and then number three. That one. Sorry, I'm doing this all off camera because it's so tight. There we go. Once again, we've reached that chain space. So it's just going through the chain spaces or working through the front loop, back loop of your chain. And continuing all the way up and when you reach your final corner work one um, single crochet into the corner space and then you can cut that yarn and we're going to work up across the other sides to join them the other way so I will meet you in that corner so I'm just working my last single crochet into that corner it will chain one to create a knot and then I'm just going to snip that leaving a long-ish tail to weave in and there we have our first join if it looks like it's leaning to one side don't worry you can manipulate those stitches so they are how you want them to be lying there we go much better and what we're going to do next is join exactly the same way along this way here 
when we get to this end, I'm going to turn it, we're not going to fast enough because we are going to put an edge the whole way around just to finish it off. So in exactly the same way, we're just going to fold it so that our seam is coming down. You can see how it's going to look when it's finished and it's so cute. And we are going to start in this corner here. So exactly as we did before, move that tail out of the way. We are simply going to tie on our yarn into this corner. Same colour so that our edging all matches. I'm just going to make sure that I tie it over that finishing off there. And there we go. And once, <clears throat> excuse me, and once that yarn is attached, I'm just going to insert our hook through that corner and the other corner. Bring our tails in the right direction. And then we're going to just yarn over, bring that yarn up those tails out of the way and we're going to chain one just to secure. So once that's all secure we're going to reinsert our hook through both the, those corner spaces and place our first single crochet of this row. Give that a bit of a pull, that's not very neat. There we go. And then we're just going to repeat the whole way across. Now obviously in this centre we're going to do something a little bit differently but I'll show you that when we get there. So work all the way across working into both the front loop of sorry the back loop and the front loop tuck those out of the way we'll deal with those in a bit and then of course the back loop of the corresponding hoop hit stitch there we go so you can just continue to work all the way along and i'll meet you in this corner so I have just completed my last stitch of this square. Now we're not going to work into the corners on here. We're going to go underneath this join and we're just going to place a single crochet over the top of that join and then we're going to carry on. So in case you want to see that again, because I think that was quite blurry. My eyes aren't working today, I'm not sure which. So once you've done your last stitch, we're going to insert the hook, not into the corner, but underneath that join between the two squares. Yarn over, bring that yarn back through. Yarn over and complete your single crochet. And then just continue all the way along up to that last corner, but don't fasten off. I will meet you up there. Oops, I don't want to be doing that one, do I? Find your square. <laughs> there it is. It's a good thing about using a contrasting colour. You can see quite easily where you should be working. There we go, let's put those back together properly. And just continue the whole way up. So I'll make, meet you up in that last corner and we will do the final edging the whole way round. And then of course we can get to lining our bag. So I've finished my last stitch and I've just reached my corners so obviously what we'd like to do is now to edge all of this but before we do that we need to get our fabric cut to size so that we can fit a zip and then we're going to sew the fabric on we're going to close the zip will be attached and then we will just do one final along the edge to join these sides so bring a loop up wherever you finished and safely tuck that to one side or pop a stitch marker in if you have one to hand. Amazingly, I don't. I'm just going to pull a load of yarn out. There we are. And grab your fat quarter or whatever fabric you're using. So it's up to you how thick you make your lining. I literally have just one massive part of the... Now, as I said, I'm being lazy. I'm using a using my pinking shears because I hate sewing. I am no way a seamstress and I would never claim to be. So I'm placing it quite close to the edge. 
just going to turn this. Oh, I hate fabric. Okay. And I'm going to grab my pinking shears because I'm very simply making sure I don't catch any of my ends. And make sure my fabric is nice and flat. And I am simply going to cut up a long side. No, I'm left-handed with my cutting, sorry. Um, just going to cut all the way up. It's ever so slightly larger. Just gonna move that out of the way. I'm going to turn. So our fabric and yarn do not mix. And I'm just gonna cut back along this side here. Not going for perfection, we're going for done here. Goodness me. There we go. It's not very neat, but it's cut. Get rid of that excess fabric. So you can see that when it's finished, we're just going to simply close. So if you want to attach a zip, now is the time that we're going to do that. So when you look into your bag, it's going to be fully lined. Nothing's going to fall out. I've gone for the grey because I think it gives a bit more depth to the bag. Now you can neaten up your edges, make sure that it fits into there. So now I've got a rough shape. I am going to just cut this again. I'm making sure all these ends are out of the way. And I'm just going to go in ever so slightly, making sure that it's as neat as it can be. So looking at that, place it right into that fold and just take off any excess fabric all the way around. So that's to that edge, I'm just going to cut there. There's probably a very good way of doing this. I don't know what it is. As I keep saying, I'm no way a seamstress, but I certainly know how to shortcut things when I need to. So now we have the right length on that end. Just need to neaten this up, end up because I couldn't cut that very well. Oops. Move those out of the way. Just check it again. That is close enough for me. I'm going to then make sure that it's sat in the crease, fold it over ready just to trim off this excess fabric. Now, obviously, if you're not using pinking shears or you know how to sew, feel free to do a nice fold, get your, um, get your sewing machine out. You can fold down so you've got a nice edge. I may do that, actually, because that looks quite nice. So <laughs> you can just fold that edge down to the length that you need it. Got an iron, you can iron it, make sure it's dead straight. So at this point, if you want to add your zip, this is for me where it gets a bit complicated because you want your zip to be inside so that you've got this edge because we're going to put an edge along here and that will just almost hide that zip for us. So if you are folding your edge in, so it's going to be hidden by this side and then we'd also need to insert our zip here. So that you've got your edge there and it's going to be slightly longer but that's better than being too short. So these bits, if I do the other end for you, if I get some needles that'll probably help me. I'm in the other room. Anything in here that will work? Oh yes, here we go. These will do. Not got very many of them. So if you want to do it properly, you can get lots of lovely tools to do that with. I am not one for doing things properly. We just need to make sure that this edge is straight. And that's going up against the back of your bag. And then we're going to pin the zip along the top like that but we don't want to sew because we still need to work through this top edge when we join. So we're going to fiddle around with this for a while 
and pin all this in. Have a play, have a pin. These are my favourite pins. I'm going to go that way. I'm not using a sewing machine. I am going to hand sew this. So once you've got everything pinned into place, the first side will look a little bit like that. Just get your needle and thread and work in and out, making sure that you don't... You know, there's actually a line. You, should, you can see there's a line where you can work on your zip. So this bit here you should sew through and this bit right next to the zip. In between here and here, you should avoid sewing through. So ideally, when you're pinning your zip in, you're going to be sewing along that line through the stitches so that your row of the top of your row here is going to be unsewn through. So you're going to be pushing through. Can't even find a needle. I'll put that somewhere safe as well. So when you come through, you're going to come through underneath. You can't even barely see that, but through, not through the stitch here, not through your top loops of your V, and then back through down and avoiding working that little section of your zip. I'm going to make mine sit there and work the whole way along. If you want to, you can sew your zip on and leave it unlined, or you can sew your zip on, then sew your lining on. But I'm going to try and pin all of mine together, and I will catch up with you once all of that is sewn up, ready to finish our bag. So after a bit of a fiddle, I did manage to get it done, and I wanted to show you just how I did it. Um, so literally, I've got my zip, my lining, which I folded over, and then I've got that top row that's not going to be sewn through. So this is just the first side. I'm just going to start with that. And then once it's done, I'm going to undo my zip to make my life a little bit easier and repeat the whole process on the other side so that I can match up the lining. And it's going to be nice and neat. So I'm going to grab my needle and my thread, just sew along here neatly to join those. And then I'll meet you back once we have got that sewn. So once you've sewn on your zip, I can't deny mine is not perfect, uh, we are going to do a final round, which will take us to join these edges. We're going to tuck all of these bits in, which is why we've left these stitches unworked. So we're going to join them and then we're going to work along the edge, go back down the side and then finally do the final edge. So if you're like me, you've still left your yarn attached, just grab your hook and pop your yarn back onto that. Oh, where's we gone? There we are. So we're going to start by working through the corners. I'm just going to tuck those in. You can sew that edge up if you want to, but your join on your bag will prevent everything falling through. I'm just going to carry on, do um, two single crochets into that corner space. And then joining these squares in the same way we did when we joined the other pairs. Just working to that front loop, back loop. Working a single crochet into each of those. It's so hard to do it through the camera. completely missed that one it's right there there we go working through the chain spaces as well or through the loop of the chains whichever you prefer as you can see it's giving us a nice join there is a small space here so if we have a look on the inside of our bag when that's joined it's going to be quite a firm join so I'm not overly concerned about these holes. If you really are concerned about that, you can of course just seam down that edge there. I just wanted to do minimal sewing because it's not my favourite thing, but it does mean that we can use these cute little bags without the risk of anything falling through of importance.
It's going to continue to work all the way up so we can then work along the edge. So as you can see, I'm just going to be tucking those, um, the edge of that zip inside and continuing to work up this corner. It's probably the fiddliest bit actually, just poking all this in, all the way up to the final join. And it will just bring and hide all of that stuff at the same time. So into the corner spaces, because obviously we've not sewn through those, although I have, we're just going to do two single crochets. So we're just going to work all the way along into each of these stitches and these chain spaces. I'll meet you in this corner. So once we've reached this corner, once again, I'm just going to tuck in the end of that zip, making sure that I can reach the end of the zip. I'll open that a little bit, just tuck that in. I'm just going to work two oops, single crochets into that corner space. And then I'm going to continue all the way down in the same fashion, all the way down, joining right, with a slip stitch to the edge there. And then when we're going to come back and work along this final edge here. So just into these back loops, just as we did the whole way to join and to do all the other edging. Tuck, tucking as we go, getting rid of those zip ends as well. I'm sure if you're a seamstress you've probably sewed them down or something with them. Again as with the other end if you wanted to you can sew the edge of the lining. But I'm quite happy that this join will be sufficient So work all the way down, slip stitch into that first one of the edging and I will meet you back once that is all done. I'm just slip stitching to this first stitch there just to join. We'll chain one to fasten off, snip snip. And I'm just going to weave that end in in a moment. So that's one edge of our bag all finished. Looking pretty good. So we just need to do this final edge here just to tuck this in and I'm going to join in this first unworked stitch. I'm going to pop my hook under there. I'm going to slip stitch to join. Yarn over with the working yarn, chain one. I'm going to work straight back into that same stitch, making sure I've caught the tail yarn underneath. Bring a loop through and work that first single crochet. That's a bit neater. There we go. And I'm going to, this from here on in, I'm going to work through that back loop only to leave that front loop unworked. And I'm just going to work a single crochet into each stitch across, including the chain spaces, ideally through that back loop to give us the nice edging. All the way to the end. And we're simply gonna fasten off, 
and then we need to attach our hoop. So work all the way along, slip stitch into the last stitch there and I will join you to add on our wrist hoop. So I have woven in the last remaining ends on this edging and I am incredibly pleased with how cute this bag is looking. So the final thing, I've really got it around my wrist to do, is to attach our ring. Now, of course, you can simply attach it with a loop through your zip, but I'm going to attach mine to my bag because I want to be able to have it on my wrist for instance, and open the bag and it not all tip out. <laughs> Might just be me, but there we go. So the easiest way to do this, I'm going to simply open the zip, pop that there, grab my yarn, and making sure that I'm working on the end where the zip is not there, I'm going back through this corner space. Now I know that I didn't sew through this, but whether or not I can get my hook back through it, oh, I can. So you should still be able, if you haven't sewn through this part, just get your hook under your, and through your corner. I told you I wasn't a seamstress, look at that, but anyway. And as always, I need this to be super secure. So I am just simply gonna pull through making sure I don't catch any other threads. And I'm first and foremost, I am going to tie this on so that it is super, super sec secure. Two or three knots is always my preferred number, going different ways, but we can't do that right now. So we will weave that in securely at the end. So once I've tied on, so many strands here, sorry. Once I've tied on my yarn, I'm just going to insert my hook and bring that yarn back through. And I'm going to chain four. And that's actually pretty much all we need because I'm going to then put the yarn, bring my, somehow do that, that's it. So that the, oh, I'll bring some yarn through. Let me just cut this yarn because we don't need very much of it. Going to make sure that the hoop is I'm going to put the hoop in position effectively because I'm going to bring this chain so I've brought everything through the hook is through the yarn is through and I'm simply going to come back through this corner yarn over and slip stitch that tightly through oops so I'll tie it when I come through. I did cut that yet. There we go. And bring that all the way through. I did cut off way too much there. And that is simply how it attaches. So I've got my other end here. So of course, you know me, I like a knot. Just going to securely knot that through. Get rid of some of this excess here. And make a couple of knots. You can, of course, weave those ends in. But that is about as secure as you're going to get it. You can even, if you want to, bring one end back through your corner. You can bring it back over your hoop if you want to double secure it. And either make another chain or simply make a couple of finishing knots. This is not a hanging wildly kind of wrist bag. This is a nice secure wrist bag you can use in any situation. So let's weave these final two ends in and then we can admire our bags. Go. So I'm just going to weave these in under here and through these stitches. Back up the other way so they are nice and securely tucked in. Too securely. One last for good measure. And then we can Snip those off. And 
And there we have our super cute wrist wearing granny square bag. I hope you've enjoyed this crochet tutorial today. Of course, if you've completed your own granny bag wristlet, do let me know, tag me in a photo on social media, and I will catch up with you all again very soon for another crochet tutorial. Hit the subscribe button and that notification bell, and you'll never miss out on any of my crochet patterns.